Hope Solo was once a household name in the world of soccer. With her incredible skills as a goalkeeper, she helped lead the U.S. women's national team to numerous victories and championships. But behind the scenes, Solo's life was far from perfect. Her career was marked by controversy, from her public feud with the team's head coach to her arrest for domestic violence. Despite her immense talents on the field, Solo's personal life and behavior often overshadowed her success. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the intriguing story of Hope Solo. We'll explore the highs and lows of her career, from her early days as a promising young athlete to the scandals that led to her eventual fall from grace. Through it all, we'll see how Solo's legacy as a soccer star is still being debated and discussed to this day. Get ready to dive into the fascinating world of one of soccer's most controversial figures. Born in 1981 in Richland, Washington, Hope Solo had an unconventional upbringing. Her father, Jeffrey John Solo, a Vietnam War veteran, often lived on the streets or in the woods. In fact, she was conceived during a conjugal visit between her parents while her father was serving a prison sentence for embezzlement. Despite his troubled past and homelessness, her father taught her soccer at a young age. When Solo was seven, her father unexpectedly took her and her brother on a trip to Yakima for a baseball game. However, he drove them three hours west to Seattle instead, where they stayed in a hotel for a few days. It initially seemed like a vacation, but they were later found by the police at a downtown bank, resulting in her father's arrest for alleged kidnapping. Solo's soccer journey began as a forward at Richland High School, where she achieved an impressive record of 109 goals, leading her team to three consecutive league titles from 1996 to 1998 and a state championship title. However, it was as a goalkeeper that Solo truly excelled. In 1999, she began her college career at the University of Washington, where she became one of the most successful goalkeepers in the program's history. During her sophomore year, she became the first Washingtonian and first goalkeeper ever to be named Pac-10 Player of the Year. Despite her athletic success, Solo's family life remained tumultuous. In 2001, while she was in college, her father faced false accusations of murder that shook the Solo family to its core. The case involved the death of a real estate agent named Mike Emert, whose lifeless body was discovered beaten and stabbed to death inside an empty home in Woodenville, a suburb of Seattle. Jeffrey was targeted as a suspect in this heinous crime, despite a lack of substantial evidence connecting him to the murder. The unfounded suspicion caused great pain to the Solo family for years as the murder case unfolded, but throughout it all, Solo stood by her father's side displaying unwavering loyalty. Jeffrey's name was only cleared posthumously years after his passing in 2007. The murder of Mike Emmert remains an open and unsolved mystery, capturing the interest of true crime enthusiasts. It has been documented extensively and was even featured in an episode of the television show, Unsolved Mysteries. It's a pretty interesting case. It's clear that Solo's early life was marked by drama and chaos, shaping her into the person she is today, but this is merely the start of a wild journey. Hope Solo's rise to fame began with her debut on the senior U.S. national team in April 2000, at the age of 18. She joined the team as an alternate for the 2004 Summer Olympics in Athens, supporting primary goalkeeper Brianna Scurry and backup Kristen Luckenville. From 2005 onwards, Solo became the team's first-choice goalkeeper, eventually setting a national team goalkeeper record for games, starts, wins, shutouts, and undefeated streak. In the 2007 FIFA Women's World Cup, Hope Solo was the starting goalkeeper for the United States. Despite conceding only two goals in four games and leading the team to consecutive shutouts, she was controversially benched by coach Greg Ryan for the semi-final match against Brazil in favor of veteran keeper Brianna Scurry, who had not played a full game in three months. The U.S. lost the game 4-0, and Solo was outraged. She expressed her disagreement with the coach's decision in an impromptu interview following the match, stating this. It was the wrong decision, and I think anybody that knows anything about the game knows that. Um, there's no doubt in my mind I would have made those saves. And the fact of the matter is, it's not 2004 anymore. It's not 2004. And... It's 2007, and I think you have to you have to live in the present, and you can't live by big names. You can't live in the past. It doesn't matter what somebody did in an Olympic gold medal game in the Olympics three years ago. Now is what matters, and that's what I think. And you're convinced that the difference would have been made if you had been in that? There would have been a difference. It was the wrong decision, and I think anybody that knows anything about the game knows that. There's no doubt in my mind I would have made those saves. 
The media went wild with this, leading to widespread questioning of Solo's loyalty and attitude towards her team. Opinions varied, with some perceiving her comments as a betrayal of her teammates, while others viewed them as a courageous stance against a questionable coaching decision. Many interpreted her remarks as criticizing Scurry's performance, although she issued an apologetic statement the next day, saying that was not her intention. Solo's clash with Ryan marked the beginning of a series of troubles. She faced criticism from teammates and coaches for her behavior both on and off the field, with accusations of being divisive and having a bad attitude. Consequently, on September 29, 2007, it was announced that she would not play in the third-place match against Norway due to a decision made by the team as a whole. The official reason given was a lack of commitment and professionalism, although many perceived it as a consequence of her outspoken nature and divisive behavior. Hope Solo's inclusion in the U.S. women's national team roster for the post-World Cup tour didn't go smoothly. Despite the players' contract stipulating their right to play, she was absent from the first workout, and didn't participate in any of the three games against Mexico, with Brianna Scurry and Nicole Barnard taking her place. However, Solo's fortunes improved when coach Greg Ryan left the team in December 2007, clearing the path for a fresh start. In June 2008, it was announced that Solo would be the starting goalkeeper for the team at the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing. This time, Scurry didn't make the team, although she served as an alternate. Solo's exceptional performance played a significant role in the U.S. team securing the gold medal by defeating Brazil 1-0 in extra time. Despite a shoulder injury that limited her participation in the qualifying campaign, she was named to the roster for the 2011 FIFA Women's World Cup in Germany. The team faced some challenges in the group stage but managed to advance to the quarterfinals, where her crucial save in a penalty shootout against Brazil helped the U.S. secure a spot in the semifinals. The team ultimately finished as runners-up after losing on penalties to Japan in the final. Solo received individual recognition with the Golden Glove Award for Best Goalkeeper and the Bronze Ball Award for her overall performance. Solo's success continued at the 2012 Olympics, where she played a vital role in the U.S. team winning the gold medal. Her exceptional saves, including a crucial one in the final against Japan, played a significant role in the team's victory. By this point, she had emerged as one of the best goalkeepers in the world, renowned for her agility, reflexes, and fearlessness. Her success on the field propelled her into the spotlight with media appearances and heightened public attention. However, as her fame grew, her personal life faced intense media scrutiny, bringing her new challenges. Following the 2012 Olympics, Hope Solo entered a whirlwind of personal turmoil. She hastily married former American football player Jeremy Stevens just two months after reconnecting. However, their relationship made headlines for all the wrong reasons. The night before their wedding, an altercation occurred that left Solo bleeding and injured. Stevens was subsequently arrested on investigation of assault, but was released the next day due to insufficient evidence, despite his history of violent and intoxicated behavior. The couple were wed the next day. In 2014, Solo experienced another challenging year as she became one of the victims of the iCloud leaks wherein intimate photos, including several nude pictures of her, were illicitly obtained and leaked online. This breach, widely known as the Fappening or Celebgate, involved the dissemination of nearly 500 private pictures belonging to various celebrities, predominantly women, many of which contained explicit content. But that's not all. On June 21, 2014, Solo faced yet another incident when she was arrested on two charges of domestic violence assault in the fourth degree. The accusations involved her half-sister and nephew. According to court documents, as reported by the Seattle Times, Solo's nephew explained to the police that his mother, who is Solo's older half-sister, had recently allowed Solo back into their lives. He stated, She always does this, referring to past problems between them. The affidavit mentioned that the teen had visible injuries, including a torn t-shirt, scratch marks on his arms, and a bleeding cut on his ear. The altercation began when he mentioned his involvement in theatrical productions and how he believed that a good actor required an athletic state of mind. Solo responded by telling him he was too fat and overweight and crazy to ever be an athlete. In response, the teen called her a name, told her to leave the house and then left the room. She followed him and called him crazy again, and when he mentioned that she and her father were crazy, she charged him, punched him in the face and tackled him. When the teen's mother tried to intervene, Solo also assaulted her. In an attempt to stop the assault on himself and his mother and to make Solo leave, the teen grabbed a broken BB gun and pointed it at her. However, she refused to leave and was circling like a shark. Solo's half-sister eventually managed to get her out of the house, 
but she persisted by circling the house, hopping over a fence and re-entering through a sliding door. These tumultuous episodes further added to the media scrutiny surrounding Hope Solo's personal life, painting a picture of instability and controversy. Before the 2015 World Cup, Hope Solo faced a suspension by the national team for 30 days, resulting from an undisclosed incident during a training camp. The suspension stemmed from a series of events, including a confrontation with police following her husband's DUI arrest in Los Angeles. Nonetheless, Solo was named to the U.S. roster for the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup in Canada by head coach Jill Ellis. Throughout the tournament, she displayed her exceptional skills and resilience, starting and playing all possible minutes in all seven of the team's matches. She achieved an impressive 540-minute shutout streak, the second longest in tournament history, and conceded only three goals. During the semi-final match against top-ranked Germany, she employed strategic delaying tactics to disrupt Celia Sasek's rhythm during a penalty kick. Sasek missed the penalty, marking the first time a German team, men's or women's, had missed a penalty in a World Cup. The US team went on to secure a 2-0 victory over Germany, advancing to the final, where they defeated Japan to win the tournament. Solo's exceptional performance throughout the tournament earned her the prestigious Golden Glove Award as the tournament's best goalkeeper. Despite the pinnacle of the 2015 World Cup, the 2016 Olympics proved to be a disappointing chapter in Hope Solo's career. During the US's matches in the 2016 Olympics, she faced jeers from Brazilian crowds who even chanted Zika at her whenever she touched the ball. This reaction was a response to Solo's pre-tournament involvement in the debate surrounding the Zika virus epidemic. Prior to the games, she had posted pictures on social media posing with various anti-mosquito products. Many Brazilians felt that her post perpetuated negative stereotypes about Brazil and created unnecessary fear about the virus. Additionally, some felt that her posts were insensitive to the Brazilian people who were working very hard to ensure the safety of the athletes and visitors during the games. But her controversies didn't end there. In the United States' quarterfinal defeat by Sweden, she attracted more negative attention. During the penalty shootout, she caused a delay of several minutes by changing her gloves before Sweden's final kick, in an apparent act of gamesmanship. Swedish player Lisa Dahlqvist was seen laughing at her actions before converting the penalty that eliminated the U.S. Following the match, Solo referred to the Swedes as a bunch of cowards, criticizing their ultra-defensive tactics. Sweden coach Pia Sundhaga bluntly dismissed Solo's comments, stating, I don't give a crap, I'm going to Rio, she's going home. And also, I think she was just stressed, and that she did not really mean it. Swedish players Lotta Schellen, Lisa Dahlqvist, and Kosovari Aslani expressed empathy for Solo, understanding her comments were in the heat of the moment. However, her remarks had severe consequences as they led to the termination of her contract by the U.S. Soccer Federation. On August 24, 2016, U.S. soccer suspended Solo for six months and terminated her national team contract, marking her second suspension from the team. Okay. Terminated contract. Effective immediately. Terminated contract. Not just a suspension. How can they do both? It's both. 17 f***ing years and it's over! The Federation cited her previous misconduct as a factor in their decision. Solo reacted angrily, claiming that her comments had been used as a pretext to force her out. Essentially, she was fired and has not played for club or country since. These incidents demonstrated that Solo's success on the field would soon be overshadowed by controversies off the field. After retiring from soccer, Hope Solo and her husband Jeremy Stevens faced a devastating event in 2018 when Solo experienced a miscarriage of twins. However, two years later, in 2020, their fortunes seemed to change as they welcomed twins, a boy and a girl. Unfortunately, their journey took a different turn in 2022. On March 31st of that year, Solo made headlines for the wrong reasons when she was arrested for driving while intoxicated in North Carolina with her two children in the car. The charges included impaired driving and resisting arrest. According to the police report, she had a blood alcohol concentration of 0.24%, three times the legal limit. 
Tests also showed that she had THC in her system. Additionally, because her two-year-old twins were in the vehicle during the incident, Solo faced a misdemeanor child abuse charge. According to the police report, a passerby had noticed her passed out behind the wheel for over an hour before her arrest. The engine was running, and she was allegedly awakened by the responding officers. Solo's attorney released a statement on her behalf, asserting her commitment to her children and emphasizing that she was released promptly and is now at home with her family. The statement also indicated that she believes the situation is more sympathetic than the initial charges suggest, and that she looks forward to the opportunity to defend herself. Almost four months later, in July, she pleaded guilty to driving while impaired. A news release announced that a judge ordered her a suspended sentence of 24 months and an active sentence of 30 days. She was given 30 days credit for time she spent at an inpatient rehabilitation facility. In addition, she was ordered to pay $2,500 in fines, along with a $600 fee for the cost of the lab tests. Additionally, she must undergo a substance abuse assessment and complete all recommended treatment. Hope Solo's career and controversies have elicited mixed reactions from her former teammates, coaches, and family members. In an interview, former coach Greg Ryan, with whom she had a public feud during the 2007 World Cup, acknowledged her strong personality and passion for soccer, but criticized her behavior as inappropriate. On the other hand, Abby Wambach, her former teammate, acknowledged Solo's controversies, but also recognized her as the best goalkeeper and a valuable teammate. Today, opinions about Hope Solo's legacy remain divided. While some remember her as a talented goalkeeper and a pioneer for gender equality in sports, others focus on her controversies and personal conduct. Solo's outspokenness and advocacy work have sparked conversations about important issues, though some argue that her actions may have diminished her impact on the game. Despite the controversies, Hope Solo's contributions to the game of soccer are undeniable. She played a crucial role in the U.S. women's national team's victories in the 2008 and 2012 Olympics, as well as the 2015 Women's World Cup. Setting numerous records and earning numerous awards, her accomplishments as a goalkeeper are noteworthy. Her success and advocacy efforts have helped bring attention to important issues within the sport. Since retiring from soccer in 2016, Solo has been engaged in various ventures. She has worked as a commentator and analyst for sports networks like BBC and Be In Sports. Using her platform, she has spoken out on gender and sports-related matters such as equal pay and women's rights. Additionally, she has been involved in philanthropic initiatives, making appearances at charity events and contributing to local charities. The controversies surrounding Hope Solo's career have undoubtedly impacted her legacy and left a mark on the world of women's soccer. While her talent and achievements on the field cannot be denied, her behavior and actions off the field have sometimes overshadowed her accomplishments. It remains to be seen how her legacy will be remembered and how her impact on the sport will be evaluated. As I conclude this video, I'd like to invite you to share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section. Did Hope Solo's controversies overshadow her on-field success? How do you view her legacy in the history of women's football? As always, I value your perspectives. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the captivating and controversial world of Hope Solo. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Feel free to drop a video suggestion in the comments or send me a DM on Instagram. I love connecting with all of you and will always do my best to respond. Goodbye for now, we'll see you in the next video.